forward really quick. I want you to bring us out on the field on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning. So without further ado, Ms. Delina, go ahead and take yourself off. Mute Hi, good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Elias. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday or halfway through the week. Um, I hope you guys are doing really well. Um, one thing I wanted to say yesterday was really phenomenal. Um, being around that energy, I loved it. Um, and it makes me want to come to the office more. And it kind of, if you know, I work at Kaiser too. So I'm just like, damn, I want to put more time into real estate to really break down these numbers that I want to meet. And Elias made it super easy. So I hope um, you guys are going to be killing it out there. And, uh, you know, there's never a perfect time. Um, I came across this phrase where or this motivational speech says there's never a perfect time and the perfect time is now. So don't delay anything. Get out of, get out of your own head and just go out there and kill it. Mm, I love that. I love that. And it's like when you break it down, when you look at people in the room, you know, look at V, look at Jen, look at Roxanne, look at Eric, look at Ben, like, they're no different than you. They have no superpower. All they do is just work their ass off. They're committed. They have a great system. They have great follow-up. And they're always, always working on their business. And so when you think about it, it's just like it's momentum. Like V was in the same position a lot of you guys are in a year ago. And she was brand new. Now she's doing 11 transactions in three months. It's crazy, you guys. So Anything is possible. Um, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you shared that this morning, Delina, because it is. I mean, they're no different than you guys. So I, I love that you brought that up. So you guys, let's talk about the market. We're going to have a high level conversation. Yeah, you know, Roxanne Smile is super, uh, what's it say here? It says uh, superpower. I Absolutely. She called me this morning and she said, honey, listen, I didn't get there. I got there late. But I was watching Instagram. I heard all the nice things you said about me. I just wanted to tell you how grateful I was for you this morning. She called me right now at 820. And that one phone call was just so meaningful to me. And I was like, hey, I got nice things to say about you because I appreciate all that you do and how much energy that you bring to the table. So before we get started this morning, uh, Cortez, you have a guest on the line. Let's introduce your guest and uh, I'll turn it over to you for a sec. Okay, good morning, everybody. First off, I had a great time at the meeting yesterday, too. Super good energy. So much that I invited my cousin to the meeting today. She recently got her real estate license. Her name is uh, Shanti Brown. And she said she had already heard about Team Fast. So she was excited when I invited her to a meeting this morning. Nice. All right, well, Ashanti, I, for some reason, your name, Ashanti Brown, sounds super, super familiar. I don't know if we've met you before, but Ashanti, say hi. Congratulations. Glad that you got your real estate license. You want to do a quick intro? Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, and yes, I have been looking for brokerages and um, came across EXP and Team Fast. So I'm definitely interested in learning more about you guys. Yeah, I've heard a lot of great things from Cortez. So awesome. You know, I'm awesome. excited. Cool. Well, we're glad that you're here. And this is an abundant atmosphere. We want everyone to share and give. And you'll see people on the screen that have done. $40 million in production. You'll see agents that are chasing that very first deal, and then you'll find everything in between. So uh, you're in a really, really good spot. It's a judgment-free zone. We are open to all. So thanks for being here. And uh, Cortez, thanks for inviting your family. So let's get right into this, you guys. We're going to go around the room. I want to have a high-level conversation about the market. I want to hear how you guys are talking about the market. And, and here's why. A lot of times what brokerages will do in a traditional setting is that they'll give you guys information, but they're not really hearing how you're conveying that information. I believe in this. I believe in making sure that you guys are all wordsmith, no matter who you are, no matter if you're the introvert or the extrovert, that you're a master at your communication, you're a master at your dialogue. Because when I think about my own career, I promise you, my energy and my communication skills have elevated me in my career. I didn't have you know, education background. I didn't go to college. I didn't come from a family of wealth. I didn't come from a lot of things, but I knew I had a lot of energy and I knew how to communicate very well because I was forced to at an early age. And so I leaned into that heavily. And then I read and then I studied and I mental conditioning. And so for you guys, like that's super important that I can hear how you guys are conveying messages and that you guys are practicing here and you're not practicing on a potentially 20 million or 20,000 $30,000 paycheck. So let's talk a little bit about the East Bay, and then I'll turn it over to you guys. I want to hear some dialogue from you. I want to hear what's going on, what you guys are seeing, patterns, nuances, so on and so forth. So by a show of hands or give me a reaction with the reaction button down below, if you're not driving, 
How many people have watched the most recent April East Bay weather report on East or on the Bay East, um, dot org? All right, cool, Quanzo, love that. If you guys not have not read that or watched that, I'm gonna show you where it is in just a moment so you guys can go back and reference it. What I want you to do is take information from there and turn it into your own mini version of the weather report. Take nuances, take patterns. Use your own idolect and your own vernacular and your own verbiage and your own vocabulary so it sounds real. I don't want you conveying a message the way that David Stark does or anybody else. In a couple of weeks from now, we're going to have a chief economist. I got, uh, I was able to get the Cal California Association of Realtors chief economist and vice president to come out and do a whole presentation for us. This is going to be such an amazing experience because he breaks it down and shows you all these different patterns, graphs, charts, trending, where we're heading, where we're at. And so it's going to give you a really great understanding. The idea is that you take that information back and it gives you reasons to talk to a consumer. Right. If interest rates are at 4.75 right now and they have a pre-approval that is 30 days, 45 days old, they might be in some trouble and they might not be able to afford that monthly depending on where they're at. So it's important that we're keeping our clients up to the speed and informing them. When we say don't just call to say, hey, Vanessa, I'm calling to check in. No, Vanessa, I'm calling to check in. I want to see where you're at. The last time we spoke, you were getting your pre-approval or you had your pre-approval, but it's been 30 days or more. I want to make sure you understand what's going on with interest rates and have you spoke to your lender. Cool. Let's do that. Let's get an updated pre-approval. There's a reason to call. So let's talk a little bit about the East Bay and what's going on. This information is coming directly from the weather report and the bayeast.org website. So obviously steady increases throughout the East Bay and the median sales price of homes. Medium sales price in the East Bay has been up on an average 1.225, which is absolutely crazy to think about it. Let's talk about the 880 corridor. March to March, this is year over year comparison. Hayward is up 20% year over year um, in homes for sale and Oakland was down 9% um, year over year. Union City, check this out. Union City, Castro Valley in Newark. Union City, the prices are up compared to last year at the same time, 49% in Union City. Castro Valley is up 36% year over year and Newark was up 30%. So take an example. Average sales price last year in March for Newark was 1.170. Average sales price right now is 1.525439. That's a delta of 355,439. Like think about that. Right. When people are saying, I don't know, is it a good time to buy? Is it, I, I'm going to wait. Like, there's no better time than right now. Like, if they have the opportunity to get in, we share thoughts, we share insights, we share market data with them. There should be all the motivation for them to move forward right now. Let's talk about West Contra Costa County homes for sale in Richmond. It was actually up by 17%. San Pablo was up by 23%. El Cerrito was up 6%, reaching a price point of 1.3. And it's absolutely crazy. Not too many people move out of El Cerrito. Very tight community. It's up on the hill. I absolutely love El Cerrito, but it's crazy to think that they're in the 1.3 range. Central Coco, uh, Contra Costa County, 13 to 17% up in Concord, Clayton, Martinez, Pleasant Hill, and Walnut Creek. And La Mirinda was up 4%, 17% in Moraga. And Arinda was 4%, excuse me, Moraga 17%, Lafayette 37%. Tri-Valley, Tri this is crazy. So homes for sale this year in the Tri-Valley, if we're talking about just San Ramon and Alamo, San Ramon, homes for sale was down by 29% and in Alamo down 52%. Everyone wants to move to San Ramon. It's it's you know it's the schools. It's it's the the way of life. Tri Valley prices everywhere in the Tri Valley. It was up nineteen to thirty six percent, and Pleasanton and San Ramon were up thirty six percent. So when you think about this, and I was reading this this morning, the median mortgage payment is now up more than twenty percent higher than it was one year ago at the same exact time. So you guys have to put these things into context and you have to really understand like what is happening around us? What are the nuances? What are the patterns? What are the comps saying? But not only comprehending those, but being able to convey the message. Because here's what I hear a lot of the times. Well, I'm not really a numbers gal. I'm not really a numbers dude. It's okay to not be like super, super analytical. 
but you have to understand that this is value stacking with all your clients. This is value add when you talk to your consumers. It's not just about prices are going up and interest rates are going up. You need to share with them what's happening in all of the microclimates. Every single neighborhood all throughout the Bay Area has its own different, um, uh, the own different, excuse me, every single market throughout the Bay Area and every single city has its own patterns and its own nuances. To say there's a blanket statement that covers the whole entire Bay, it doesn't really fit. You have to break it down to every single community and you have to understand what is going on. I talked to Christian Gonzalez yesterday. She's like, somebody said that they wanted to write 650 on a home that was listed for 750. She's like, yeah, it's a bad idea. I was like, do you know, did you run the comps with them? She's like, no. So right now she's just taking that and having a conversation with them. I said, you need to get on a Zoom call with them. You need to break down the comps. You need to show them exactly what house is listed for, what they sold for, and how many offers were on each of the homes. So let's do this, you guys. I want to hear some of the patterns, some of the nuances, what you guys are seeing. Um, Andrea, you um, recently celebrated your one-year anniversary, correct? Yes. Well, congratulations and happy anniversary to you. So I want to hear from you. Um, you know, you've been in this game now. For a year, you've had some great success. So what are some patterns? What are some nuances that you're seeing right now when you're having communications with your clients? Um, actually, a gem I picked up yesterday, I was, um, which is great to be in the office. I overheard Eric uh, talking to some of his clients. And one thing I heard about the market um, that I like to use on one of my clients is for every 1% that rate goes up, as you see, rates are going up very, very fast. Um, it, your purchasing power goes 10 down 10%. And so I found that as, um, really interesting. And like, you know, people are trying to save money, but if you're not getting into the market now down the line, when you're trying to save money, it really doesn't, it, it, it offsets the, how much you have. So that was something that, um, I picked up yesterday, but yeah, the market, um, from last year to this year has been just, um, on fire. So, um, good time to get it now it's good. Always i love this i love this um nick g you had your hand up my my dog how are you y'all with the pup yeah we're doing it uh, can yes, you hear me dude. yes loud and clear brother yeah it's pretty interesting like over here in san francisco for example like this past saturday i went to go tour we went to go take a look at about 12 different homes with my client uh that i just started working with all average price point was between 1.4 to $2 million. Um, and what we found is that uh, over here in San Francisco, which is very surprising to me, is that yes, there's definitely some houses that are, um, you know, once you have an off day, boom, within seven days, typically, you're gonna get multiple offers, but there's still a nice percentage right now where they're not getting any offers. And these are in neighborhoods, if you're familiar with San Francisco, we're talking about like Diamond Heights. Uh, we're talking about Glen Park. We're talking about Sunnyside, even parts of Patrol Hill. So there's definitely some parts, some really cool parts that typically uh, you're, you're, they usually will get multiple offers way over asking price, but some of them aren't getting any offers. So what that shows me as a buyer's agent is opportunity. That's an opportunity for me to come in and see what I could do for my clients. You know, obviously, Sometimes when I'll look at a, a, a home that doesn't get any offers, the first thing I wonder is, well, what's wrong with it? Uh, there was one that I saw uh, that they didn't take pictures of the backyard because the backyard was a mountain. So obviously that one wasn't, you know, going to, uh, that one's going to be difficult, but some of them were really cool. So that's what I'm kind of seeing in San Francisco. They're not, some of them are just sitting on the market right now. Even with me, I got a listing that's been, it's really cool listing, but um it's been a little bit challenging lately to find, to get into contract. So that's what I'm seeing in the city. You know, so uh, typically most people will think that San Francisco is super competitive all over. It, that's not the case. And on the flip side, you know, with some of the other buyers, I think what uh, uh, the, um, you know, the, the, the uh, woman who had just spoke before me, you know, she hit a good point. You know, I think it's really important to, if you got somebody pre-approved a month or two ago, hey, stop that boy. Um, if somebody, <laughs> if you got somebody approved a month or two ago to follow up with them and see where they're at, because the interest rates have risen. So I've had two clients right now that are, uh, you know, uh, more looking in the East Bay, you know, their purchase price is more around 500 to 700,000. 
but because the rates have increased, their buying power has decreased, you know, by like 50 to $80,000. So it's like, it's a sticker shock right now. So that's kind of what I'm seeing on both sides, you know, when it comes to a one to $2 million range here in the city. And what I'm also seeing in the East Bay, because typically if somebody's, if somebody's out there looking at homes for five or 600,000, you know, they're definitely on a, 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 you know, a lot more stronger budget, you know, so I kind of want to like, you know, at least it gives me an opportunity now to follow up with a lot of other people that I've been working with and just kind of update them and, and start a new conversation and kind of see where they're at. And it also just helps us not go out there and waste too much time, I mean, you know, because you don't want to go drive around everywhere, you know, if you know it's not realistic. So that's kind of like what I'm seeing right now, for sure. And I, I absolutely love that. And and you guys, like I said before, we're not calling just to check in. Every single call and every single time you touch base with the client, it's an advancement in the process. It's an advancement in the relationship, and it's a next step in the process. So you guys hit that link below. I just sent you guys a link, and as I'm on the on the call right now, I get an email alert from Altos. Altos, and uh, Quantum will come to you in just a second. Altos is a great way for you to guys for you to all. Stay up to date on what's happening in the market, altosresearch.com. So in that link below, you can register for a Zoom call tomorrow. And here's the topics that are going to be included. Whether raising, rising rates are slowing buyer demand, an update on inventory and where it's likely heading, how mortgage rates and inflation may impact demand, which leading indicators to watch the rest of the year, how to talk to buyers and sellers about the data right now. I think it's a powerful meeting. If you guys have the ability to log on, I just put the link down below. This is a super, super important time. Also, you need to work with the lender right now, whether you're brand new, whether you're experienced and do a what if scenario. Mr. Buyer, what if interest rates go to 5.5 based on what you're approved right now? What does that actually do to your buying power? If you're at a 4.25 right now, and if it goes up to a 5.25, what does that do to your monthly? What does that do to your overall purchasing power? So, Mr. Buyer, do you see um, the, the perils of you waiting and what that could possibly do and how that could potentially affect you not buying a home in the next year or so? Like, have that what-if scenario with the lender, and they'll be able to break that down with you and show you a side-by-side -side comparison. Kwanzaa, let's go over to you. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, so real quick, just, uh, you know, to echo back on what you were saying, Elias, uh, you know, when you were talking about the, uh, the summary of the, uh, the Bay East report, especially for Hayward, uh, you said it was a 20% increase year over year, and that's the median, right? So yeah. um, uh, I showed a couple homes to uh, my buyer on Monday, and we made an offer yesterday on a home. It's a townhouse, mind you. This townhouse, the, the, the closest comp was right next door. Um, it went for, uh, it, so it was listed for 470 and sold for 550 last, so on, last year, right? It was sold last year for 550. That's about a 20% increase, right? And then, so when we did our comps, you know, I did the CMA, you know, we, we pulled the numbers and all this stuff. And we knew that we had to be pretty much at least like around the 20% to be very competitive. And we were, so our offer, um, you know, came in third in terms of the, the initial offer. And then we got a call back about uh, a, a, a counter scenario and, uh, and my buyer actually went up and we actually became first position in terms of price, but we got beat out because of the terms. Someone came in a little bit lower than us, but full, like non-contingent. Right. So, um, so, so that, so that totally supports that narrative and, you know, where the price is going and that's the median. So that means prices are going a lot higher. That's one point. The second thing, uh, what I didn't share is that there were 18 offers on a townhouse in, in Hayward. And, um, I, when I did townhouse in Hayward before it wasn't that many. So I definitely see there's a, a higher buyer demand. And my theory is that one, you definitely have, you know, people just want to be in townhouses, right? So you have that demand that's already there, existing demand. And then you also have the downward pressure of people who were looking at a, maybe a, a, a single family detached home, a three bedroom or whatever. But now because of the interest rate has literally jumped like, you know, a 200 plus, the 250 basis point in the past 10 weeks, 
now they can no longer get into a single family home now, but they still want to own. So now you have that downward pressure of the demand coming back, coming down also into that pocket of, of the townhomes. So I think that's happening right now um, in the market. And I see that and I, you know, I'm, and, and uh, what Nick was saying, you know, also makes sense because, you know, if you think about it, like the demand like comes down, right, down the food chain. So if you think about it at like a, like a high tide, like, you know, when the money was cheap and everything like that, you know, it was flooded, like, you know, everything from the bottom, from the condos all the way up to the luxury market, everyone was buying because the, the debt is cheap. But now that, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the high tide is starting to recede because, you know, the feds are tightening, they're, you know, they're, they're starting to, uh, you know, to reduce their balance sheet, all this other stuff. Like, it, I think it's a trickle down effect. So to Nick, that's, I think that's what probably what's happening is you start to see people, you know, that were like move up buyers, they're no longer moving up because it doesn't make sense for them to do that. So, um, you know, so, so, I, so there is going to be opportunity there. So if you have people that, let's say, they're not spending the top of their, like, they're not the, the, the higher band of what their, you know, their purchase price is, and they can still get in, like, you know, like, oh, now is an opportunity because you're going to have less competition, right? You can get into, like, the $800, uh, 800000 or whatever, you know, market you're trying to get into. But for the people who are already at the high end of their bandwidth, then they have to come back down and they have to go down, you know, like if they were looking at like, oh, we want to, you know, we had the purchase power back then to look at a four bedroom, you know, for our first uh, first home, but interest rate has gone up, you know, again, <laughs> like, you know, like, like two and a half percent in the past 10 weeks. Now they're like, well, you know, we still want to own. Now we have to look at a three and a half or, or you know, a three bedroom. Yeah. So. Man, great insight, great contribution. And here's the thing, you guys, I, you, you have to be able to set the tone. Um, I'm going to share something with you. And, and this should be done super, super early in your in your consultation. And I brought up a couple of things here because I think it's important. I've shared this with you guys before. And, and, and I'm gonna, I always like to come back to this. It's like, um, you know, this market is not for the unmotivated buyer. And you are going to have this conversation early, early on when you do your buyer's consultation. That's why I believe. And I'll say this to I'm fucking blue in the face. Do not cut corners with your buyer's consultation. Doing a buyer's consultation in the driveway on the hood of somebody's car is not an actual buyer's consultation. You need to take the time to sit down and educate them about what's happening in the market. Also, you need to explain to them what the buying process is. And most importantly, you need to help them understand what you're strategy is and how you're going to get offers accepted in this competitive environment. So educate and inform. Let me take a moment to quickly share with you the reality of what is actually occurring in our real estate market. Share the numbers, share the data, comprise your own sheet just like this of what is happening right? You take the numbers from Altos, you take the numbers from the Bay East Association of Realtors, you take the information that you're receiving from the Sacramento Association of Realtors, SFAR, wherever you get that. And you ask them, I'm curious, have you heard about what is actually occurring in our real estate market today? What type of market are we in? What do you know about the market? What kind of information are you hearing from your friends? What kind of nightmares are you hearing from your friends and family? I want to hear what you I want to understand and hear what you know. Cool. Now, let me share with you the reality of what is actually happening in the Hayward market. And I want to share some data with you. If you share this data early, if you share the stats, figures, market trends, and you share that early on in your presentation, then when you go to present an offer and they want to hit you with some lowball shit that's $100,000 over asking price, hold on a second. You haven't done the proper work up ahead or ahead of time to prepare the client for what is going to come. We have to let them know that there's going to be a storm that we're going to have to weather. We're going to have to hunker down. You're going to have to have your mouthpiece in. I'm going to push you back in the ring. This is part of being a coach for your clients. And so it's important, I believe, foundationally, I don't care if you're the $40 million producer on the call today, or if you are searching for your first deal standard, standard, because it's so hard for a consumer to understand unless you're really, really breaking it down. George, you had your hand up, bro. Let's go to you. Yeah. So 
kind of going back to what you're saying about like educating the buyer on what they're doing and like how the market's going, what I like to do and what I've been doing lately is I have them all set up on real scout. And so to really keep that expectation of what they would be paying when they see it, the purchase price is that any property that they've found that I've seen that they say that they're interested in on real scout, I'll actually call the agent and let the agent know, especially like Vallejo. I called um, an agent in Vallejo the other day and I only know pretty much the vast majority of the East Bay and Hayward specifically. So I don't know like Elk Grove or Hayward. So I've been reaching out to these agents because those are where my clients are looking and asking them like, hey, I'm trying to get acquainted with your area. I see you listed at like 450. What did you guys end up accepting? Just so I have an idea of how your market's going. And then I take that back to my client and let them know like, hey, that house you wanted for 450, I just learned from the agent that the market in Vallejo is heating up and now they just got 80K over the asking price and I'm taking that back to them. So now they have that real expectation in mind of what to expect of any home within that area. And so that's pretty much what I found out has been working for me um, as far as setting the tone for them um, and then just giving them multiple different options and then any homes that recently sold. So then that way they can look at the photos themselves and even with me on Zoom and kind of compare the two. Yes, I love it. I love it. Good contribution, man. Good share. I love this. Um, Maria, let's go up to Sacramento. We had a couple of people in the chat asking, how are you pulling um, Sacramento data? Where are you going for the information? And um, you know, first off, where are you going for the information? But then secondly, how are you having this conversation with your clients? What's this dialogue sound like? Well, um, I pull a lot of my data from MLS, but I also follow Ryan Lindquist. He's a Sacramento appraiser blog great wealth of information and he sends out stuff almost every day and definitely every week. Um, average sales price in Sacramento is about a hundred, excuse me, 52575 depending. Um, 70, what was my number? 70, 72% of all offers are over asking and multiple offer situation, 72%. Hello. <laughs> That equates to about 23 to 25,000 over list price. Um, inventory wise, less than a month. We're at 0.8. So I always tell my buyers, A, over list 23% and most get it. Two, 0.8 equates to if nothing else comes on the market, it'll take us less than a month to sell all that we have on the market. Um, and I'm, I'm straight. I mean, I had a situation just recently where I did a buyer consult. We were all set. I just found out they co-signed on a car. <laughs> mm. I'm like, no. So someone wrote earlier, you got to check in with them and their lender like on a weekly. If you're looking and you've been looking for months, what started out three months ago, I can guarantee you is going to be totally different than it is today. So it's really important for us to stay connected. Yes, I love it. And what, what a great great follow-up call right this is this is an advancement in the relationship with your client it's not just hey just checking in and want to say hi cool hi maria right it's like having something of purpose to call them with so maria love the stats love the figures really high level information uh Gurpreet, let's go over to you Gurpreet, you've been writing tons of offers uh super super successful one of our top producers so, Gurpreet, what are some things that you're seeing in the market right now? And how are you prepping and preparing um, these conversations with your clients? Let's hear from you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so I think a lot of it has already been said, but going back to, you know, uh, what just kind of recapping, really knowing the data, really uh, setting the expectations up front before you start spinning your wheels, because um, what happens is if you're 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 not educating them from the get go, you're going to get exhausted yourself, but not just you, your client as well, because they didn't know what they were walking into. So if you're educating them from the get-go, sharing the stats, sharing the data with them and saying, hey, look, this is, this is what's gonna happen in the marketplace. This is how you should be prepared. If you want to get a deal, if you want um, to save money, this is my strategy. This is what you're gonna have to do 
to make it happen. So um, know that going into the market, right? And then write offers strategically. Let me do the work. I'll do the work. I'll come back and share the data with you. And from there, I will tell you the strategies that will help you win the offer. So really just setting the expectations with them from the get-go and making sure they're on board so you're not wasting your time or theirs. Yeah, and you guys listen to the tone of the messaging here, right? So Gurpreet has done, you know, hundreds of deals in her career, but like the tone of the messaging, like I'm the professional here. We're going to make decisions based off of what? Not my opinion and not how I feel. What I'm going to do is we're going to base decisions based on the data and what's happening in that local market. Now, it's my job to present to you, to share with you, and to develop a strategy based on what's happening in that neighborhood of Panol to make sure that we're writing an offer that is going to get accepted or at least is going to put us in the best position to potentially get a counter. So, like, setting the expectation, it's not like, hey, just go and write that, go and write that. Hey, let's go and see this. Wait a minute, that's completely out of your price range. You have to be able to have some standards as an agent and say, no. I'm the professional. I understand the market, but you don't want to be pompous. You don't want to be cocky. You don't want to be rude. But if you educate them early and you let them know that you're going to lead them through this process and you're going to educate them every step of the way, they're not going to question you. They're not going to question you. So really, really good stuff I'm hearing. Let's go over to, uh, let's go to Vanessa. Vanessa, hopefully baby boy is feeling a little bit better. If you're not able to put your camera on, I will give you a pass on this one because I know you're at home sick with a baby. Vanessa, do you want to chime in on this? Vanessa Vogel. Yes, I do. I'm actually feeling a little bit under the weather myself oh, now. Shit. Okay. If you want to pass, you can pass. I get it. Um, I would like to still speak on the market, but uh, let me right. turn on Let's my go then. Let's go. I appreciate you. Oh my gosh, guys. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. So we have also been writing uh, a couple of offers here on the stocks inside. We even went as far as Merced. Um, and we definitely have been getting beat out still. Um, Stockton's market, I've done research um, and data research and comparisons. They were quoting supposedly um, 25 over asking was still a lot. We went one, we went 30 over asking and still got beat out as far as terms goes. Um, still very competitive as long as, I mean, it's not about the price guys. It's definitely um, the contingencies are in terms are what we're getting beat out on still. Mommy? Yes. I was making it He's better, but I'm not. Oh, <laughs> so I'll trade that any day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, feel better. And if you guys need anything, since you've been so gracious and provided me with coffee. Hi, buddy. I'm glad you're feeling better. Hi. Hi. If you need anything, you. let me know. I'm right down the road from you. I appreciate it. All right. So um, let's do a little bit of role playing here. I'm going to go to Ilona. Ilona is always down for this. And so Ilona, I'm going to go over to you. So Ilona, I am a brand new client. I know nothing about the buying process. Um, a client, a, a friend of ours just bought over in Maxwell Park. They said it was super, super competitive. Um, they purchased the home and it was 20% over asking price. Like, what am I getting into? What am I walking into? Kind of prep me for what's ahead in this, this crazy, crazy market of, of buying real estate in the Bay. So what am I going to expect and what am I up against? Absolutely. So it really depends on the areas that you're looking at, but there are you want still- the laurel? Really we want the laurel or lower diamond. Uh, there's definitely, a, I would say there's definitely a shortage of inventory that shouldn't discourage you. We should keep looking, but there's the market is, um, it's a hot market. There's definitely some deals available. Um, we, what, what that looks like is any house that may be on the market for a little bit longer, um, which we are seeing now compared to say last year where we're seeing a little bit of a, a, a cool off. So instead of 20 offers on one house, we're looking at about 10 offers, which gives us a little bit of a competitive edge when we look at the market data and we understand what houses were sold at, we can come in at a competitive offer 
that's going to be probably above asking, but we're going to be able to uh, negotiate, let's say, with uh, different options like our uh, contingencies and how we can make the process go faster. What the important part is to analyze the data and see what the houses around the area have been sold at recently so that we can come in with that one offer that's going to be accepted and competitive once we find your house. Good. I love it. I love it. And obviously still new, still learning the, the, the verbiage, but I think that, that sounds solid. So good stuff. Um, Andrea Willis, let's go over to you. You've been writing offers, not only writing offers, you've been getting tons of accepted. Um, I would love to have your camera on, uh, even though you have a wild bun, it's okay. So Andrea Willis, like what are some things that you're seeing? You've been writing a ton of offers. You already have, I think, seven in contract this year, three pending, four closed. So Andrea Willis, what are some things that you're seeing? All right, cool. We'll come back to Andrea Willis. Let's go over to Moss. Moss, are you available? One, two, three, Moss. One, two, three. Okay, cool. Joellen uh, Brooks. And you guys, important that if you're going to be on group coaching, I, I just ask you guys to have your camera on. So that's three people I've called on and nobody has responded. So I'm going to go to Linnell Dixon. And if she doesn't respond, I'm only going to go to people that have their camera on. That's, that's, wow. That's, there she is. There she is. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Linnell? All right, talk to us. You've been writing offers, not only writing offers, you've had tremendous success. You've had quite a great run over the last couple months. Your business has taken off. You have momentum. You have a business partner. So let me tell you, let me hear from you. Like, what are you seeing? What are the patterns? How are you getting the offers accepted? And how are you having this dialogue with consumers? So, you know, I, I absolutely hate talking on anything. Okay. But, um, so one of the things that I do do, which is surprising that a lot of people don't do is, um, one, I read over the MLS instructions on how the listing agent want the offer to be presented. Um, that's one. And then the other thing I do is right after I read over it, I call the listing agent and let them know that I'm going to present an offer. And so uh, that creates some type of human on human connection. Yes. And then the, huh? No, I was agreeing, saying yes. And then the last thing that I do once I submit the offer and I, you know, uh, I, I already contacted the listing agent and let him know that I'm getting ready to submit it, I follow up. And so then I talk to the listing agent and I'm like, okay, hey, so is there anything that, you know, stood out or anything that we could change or things like that? So, you know, nine times out of 10, my offer do get accepted, but it's just basically creating some form of relationship with the listing agent. Beautiful. And Lanelle, let me ask you, how are you prepping your clients? Like, how are you having conversations about this crazy ass market? Like, what does that dialogue sound like? Um, I'm just straight up and I'm like letting them know off top, like from the beginning, it's like, um, you approve, pre-approved for 600,000. You can't look at a house at 600,000. You're not going to get it. You have to look at a, a home that's 500,000 and be ready to offer a little bit above that 500,000. So just basically being straight up with the client, like no bullshit. And I'm really nice. Clients love me. Um, but I don't bullshit them. Like, what's the point? Yeah. Like, why would we go look at a $600,000 $600, house and you can't afford it? Mm. I, I love this. And I love the tone, Linnell. And I know that you don't like to speak, but I'm glad that you did speak <laughs> and contributed at a high level. Because it, it, when you think about like the tone and the way that she takes control of the conversation. Also, she said something that is very, very uh, important. It's, it's a no brainer, but a lot of times we miss out on that. So before you guys are going to submit the offer, read all the agent remarks, read all the confidential remarks and don't, hey Otis, um, don't call the agent and say, hey, I just wanted to talk to you about, and that information is on the MLS because instantly what is that agent thinking? Like, fuck, dude, why is, why can't this person read? Like, what am I going to deal with if I actually accept this client, this agent's um offer are they going to be calling me all the time do they really know what they're doing like oh my god like hey Quan, i just wanted to follow up i read all the confidential remarks i read all of the um you know mls comments i don't have any questions about that but i want to make sure i have some clarity of this and this okay cool lovely got that now i'm going to be submitting an offer i just wanted to double check cool since you we um first communicated do you have any offers on the table can you give me an idea of the range of where you're at? Because I don't want to waste your time, nor do I want to waste my client's time. And I want to present the offer that's going to win. 
All right, cool. So, so be able to have that communication early, but don't look like a fucking schlep rock that didn't read the confidential remarks because it's instantly, it's a bad look from the moment you call that person. So many agents are like, um, yeah, did you read? Yeah, it's actually in the MLS remarks. And what are they saying? Like, oh God, dude, this agent, why? Right? Why can't you just read? So, Linnell, I appreciate you saying that. Linnell, you had another hand. Uh, is that uh, the old yeah, hand? No, I just wanted to say I had, I literally just made, um, like, last, like, two days ago, I made a video um, that I was going to put up. And then I was like, oh, I'm not going to put that video up. But it was just basically talking about how I literally get my offers accepted. I've, I've wrote in a few offers that didn't get accepted. But for the most part, all of the offers that I did write that got accepted was because, you know, one, like I said, I was able to follow those instructions. You're dealing with people. You know, you got to remember people, they do get attitudes and they're like, oh, why did I put in all that work in the in the uh, offering or the MLS? Why why did I do all that work if you're not going to read it? So I did make a video. I'm going to post it. I thought it was make probably a like video. a video. Little... I mean, post that video. That's a good video. Okay. Okay. I thought it was like a, <laughs> you know, yeah. okay, but yeah, I'll post it. Okay. Well, now get out of your head. That stuff is good. That's a good video. You guys, I, I, you, Elias, you already know, like, I am like very quiet and not quiet in person like i'm loud in person but quiet <laughs> online <laughs> well all right we'll keep doing your thing if you can keep getting those offers except that you're doing something right uh joellen you're back good stuff appreciate you Hi. let's hear what you are experiencing the communication that you're having to your consumer about this wild ass market that we're in right now good morning basically the same as Linnell, just doing all my all the work up front making sure that when you get ready to submit the offer that your cover letter is complete with the other realtors information their broker ids like detail it as much as you can because it makes the work easier on them and when they see that they know they're going to have a good agent on the other side that's going to do their due diligence complete everything properly um, but not only that, but when you get your clients approved, check their approvals, see how much they're being charged, because you want to make sure that a lender is not just throwing an upfront point in there where a rate is a par rate, because that money that they are charging up front could go towards the appraisal waiver and the purchase power. And so I just saved my client almost $8,000 by looking at her paperwork up front from the lender and then sending to, to another lender. And then the other lender was like, well, just send me the other lender's uh, uh, loan sheet, you know, pre-approval. I said, no, we're not doing that. That's tacky. You had an opportunity up front to be honest and let her know that you were gonna charge her that. I'm all, but we're not exchanging uh, loan estimates at all. And then at the end of the day, my client went with the other lender because she was up front, gave her a really good rate. and. That's it. But the other lender tried to get really like she tried to scare my client by saying, I've done all this work up front. You're this, you're that. I worked really hard and I had to like get her on the phone. Hey, knock it off, back off. We're not doing that. I love this. I love powerful. So like like when you hear Joellen speak, it's it's powerful. Right. And like she's she's short and she's sweet. But I'll tell you what, she's she's like dynamite comes in small packages. And I absolutely love this. And especially my this client, she's a nurse practitioner. So she works in healthcare, And she has seen the fact that I advocated for her. I protected her, you know, and her yes. biggest asset. So thank you. That. Good stuff, Joellen. You guys, this is a time of year where you need to get really, really aware with all the different programs that are out there for your consumers for down payment assistance, because let's give it some context. Say interest rates have gone up now 4.5%, 4.75. Let's just have a conversation about this. Well, if you know that if there's a certain census tract that, that falls in maybe Havens Court or certain area of, of seminary, or let's just take an Oakland for an example. Well, last year we had a client that couldn't come up. They're at their max. They needed to come up around $10,000. Um, they weren't able to. Well, what we did, we changed their lender from JVM to um, Bank of America at the last minute. And here's why. Bank of America had the Eagle program. The Eagle program is 17,050 or 175 give or take, um, of down payment assistance. Now, 10,000 of it comes in the form of a grant and 7,500 came in the form of credit towards closing costs. Well, that 
extra 17.5 was able to put their offer in the first position <clears throat> and they had the best offer without having to come out of pocket. So if you're aware of the different scenarios and different programs that are out there, that might be the difference that they're not able to pay because their, their purchasing power went down $10,000. They weren't able to afford it. However, they had a program that helped them with their down payment as well as their, their, um, their closing costs. Now they're back in the fight. So this is a time where you guys need to be evaluating who you're working with and have these lenders on cue to be like, you know what, JVM can't do it, but I know Fairway can do it. Fairway can't do it, but I know that Bank of America and Adrian can hook me up. So be able to know, like, maybe that will be the deciding factor. And I'm only speaking from experience. Kwanzo, you had your hand up. Yeah, I have a question on that really quick. Do we have like a spreadsheet or something that have exactly what you're talking about where we can see the different programs and kind of like how they work and stuff like that? Like a matrix? Well, I, I think Terry Daniel might be the, a good person to talk about this because her and her partner, Pam, have done tons and tons of uh, videos and have talked highly about the different programs out there. So, Terry, is that something that you can speak to or should I defer to, to Pamela on this one? Um, actually, Pamela, because that's her expertise as far as different down payment programs. And the reason why she does a lot of research into that, because just like you said, it's very crucial on in the next step for any client getting in a home because they might just be, you know, I'm, I'm short a little bit and everybody doesn't have ability to go get gift funds from family members. So sometimes those programs and having that conversation with a client explaining to them because a lot of them don't like to like what do you mean leave jvm and go over here i just gave all my information blah 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 and it's like pay attention stay focused the goal is you do want this home right here on 123 main street correct but we're going to send all your documents over here but definitely pam she's she's well versed she's the one yeah so so you guys pamela spivey and she did a whole series just i, I want to say about six months to maybe a little bit more than six months ago she did a whole series. I think it was like 30 videos and 30 days of like all the down payment assistant program. So she has a wealth of information about that. And then just think about the, the, the lenders that you use. Obviously we recommend JVM. We recommend Fairway. We recommend um, the KD, KD team at um, Alameda Mortgage. We have Adrian who is at Bank of America. Um, you have somebody like Dominic Villa at the um, Summit Funding. So you have all these people that we use within the company and come highly, highly regarded. Um, start there and be like, hey, guys, we're in a competitive market. I want to do a worst case scenario sheet. And I also want to know about all the down payment assistance programs that you offer. Reach out to Pam. And now you have a couple options in your back pocket. Now, mind you, some of the programs are going to be dependent on where the house falls. Houses like in San Ramon, Alamo, and some of the higher price points may not uh, uh, fit the bill, but depending on where they fall in the census track, they might be able to qualify for down payment assistance. So uh, it's up to you guys just to do your homework, but that's where I would start, Kwanzo. Otis, you had your hand up. Can we get a little cheat code and maybe get that in Slack? Um, it, it's in Slack. Let me find out where it actually is because I know Pam has put those resources in there, um, but I definitely want you guys to, to start with your key lenders because everyone offers something a little bit different and some of them don't advertise that they have down payment assistance programs until you uncover and you ask them like oh well why didn't you fucking tell me that in the beginning right so sometimes you have to ask and then they finally give you that information so let's let's go to one other person and we'll kind of close this out for the day um alex lopez you're up in the um, Solano County area. Alex, what are some nuances and patterns you're seeing and how are you having this communication to your clients? Um, definitely letting them know that it's still, you know, it's a hot market, low inventory and all the things we've been hearing over the last couple of years, that's definitely still in play. Um, what I am noticing though, of course, is because of the uh, mortgage rate interest going up, uh, definitely houses in a certain price point, about uh, 700,000 or more are starting to sit a little bit longer. All right. So I was just checking it out last night. I saw, hey, we got houses that are, you know, 2010 and newer builds, um, nice four to five bedrooms. And now they're up to 30 days on the market. Um, that's obviously due to people kind of getting priced out and kind of going back to the lower thing that we said earlier. So we're still we're seeing that, too. We've got those folks who are bracketed in that price range coming down. And so houses that are about the 550 to the 650 
those houses are still going pretty quick within a weekend. You know, houses are listed three to four days later, those are gone. So if those are our price points that we're shopping in. We got to get ready for a battle because we're going to be having to go in strong and putting our best foot forward, which means communication between myself and the other um, agent and making sure that the motivation is definitely there. So like he said earlier, if it's not something that you're highly motivated to get into, and you're not ready to get through this. I was like, this is not the market for you. So I'm trying to just be completely upfront with the folks um, getting that going because I do have a couple of buyers consultations this week. So I want to make sure that I share that information up front um, along with, you know, how I'm going to work and how I'm a good fit for that. And if you articulate like that, you're going to set a really, really strong, positive tone with your consumer and you're going to take charge from the moment you start speaking with them. Uh, and, and so uh, well said, I really, really appreciate that contribution. Otis, is that a new hand or an old hand? It's an old hand. Okay. All right, cool. We got to get on. Alex a Giants hat though. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, you know, I heard something on the radio the other day. I guess the Coliseum is having all kinds of problems with stray cats inside of the Coliseum. So they're trying to, like, get all the cats and get them out of there. But like, they don't know where they're coming from. But it's reduced the amount of mice and rats that have gotten into the Coliseum. But now they're overrun with all these cats. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just saying, Ace fans, they said that the rats are all gone. So I don't know. It might be safe to go there. <laughs> so let's go here, you guys. So, so obviously, we, we know the conversation. What I want to encourage everyone to do is that you know you're having these conversations with or how to have these conversations because we're talking about it here. Well, now it's like, what's the action piece behind this? I can either A, go and create a great video like Linnell said. She created a great video. She's a little apprehensive, a little gun shy about posting it. But at the end of the day, who cares? Just post that shit. I love the videos where you say, oh, I wasn't going to post that. And then you post it and then you only got to have a thousand views on it. Like, I love those videos. Right? It happens all the time. Um, and, and then it's like, these are the reasons to call people, even if they're old leads in the lead pond. Hey, Quan, Elias Sudo calling from eXp. I want to give you a quick call. I noticed that you were searching for homes in Berkeley a couple months ago, and there's some things that have changed dramatically. And I want to share this information with you. Like, that's something I'm on. Well, what's changed, right? Like, I don't know if you're aware of the major changes that have happened in the real estate community over the last three months, but that's why I'm calling you, right? It's not like, hey, you're still thinking about buying a home. No, we need to create some tension. There's a sense of urgency around these conversations. So it's a great way to follow up. Do you have clients that have been shopping for the last couple of months and that don't have a new fresh pre-approval? Have you done your homework with all the different lenders to find out what type of programs are out there that can maybe cover that delta if they're potentially short because interest rates have elevated? So, right, this is the time for you to do a little dig and do a little research, get your dialogue together, and then go out there and start messaging this to people. Start calling people. Start talking to your sphere. Start talking to the people that have been in your database for quite some time. Get in touch with those people that are just fucking window shoppers for the last three, six months. Like, build some urgency, build some tension around this so you can potentially get them into a home in the next three months. Like I said, you guys, Q2 is gonna be a huge Q quarter for us, but we gotta put some tension around this and we gotta create some urgency because at the end of the day, we don't want our buyers to miss out because we are the great emancipators of the dream. And that's what I look at our job and our position as, as realtors, great emancipators of the dream. So go out there and educate your consumers and make it happen. Let's have Randy do a quick takeaway for us, bro. Randy's key takeaways from today's group coaching session. Thanks, Elias. Um, key takeaways is, you know, just making sure that you set kind of the expectation with your, your buyers up front, right? Make sure that they're well aware of what the trends are in the market um, and, and they have all the information that they need in order to uh, make the best decision possible for them and, and really be the advocate for them and, and let them know, like, hey, I'm going to do everything that I need to do in order to get this done for you, but you kind of have to trust me and take my lead on this and make sure that you're kind of delivering that message with confidence so that they can believe in you to move forward. Totally. You guys, we're not door openers. I mean, that's, that's why Redfin pays their agents, you know, a salary and they don't pay them much commission. It's just go open doors for us, right? That's not who we are and that's not whoever we're, we're ever going to be. We are true professionals. We are advocates for our consumer. And we need to make sure that we do two things from the start. We need to educate our consumer and we need to lead them through the process. That's who you guys are. That's your responsibility. So, Randy, I appreciate those takeaways. Listen, you guys have an amazing, amazing day. I'm going to be heading to Oakland in just a couple minutes here. But take this information and don't just store it and don't just have it in there. 
like get that stuff out however way you want to assimilate this information like take the information but find a way to say you know what let me go and call 20 people and tell them about what i just learned i'm gonna go create one video about something i took away one video i love what maria said i love what linnell said i love what george said i love what delina said like one person might have opened your mind and said hmm that guy that's a great way of thinking of it. i love the way they articulated that let me repurpose that information. Let me R and D rip off and duplicate and then go and create something on social. There's nothing stopping you guys. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. I appreciate you guys showing up every single week, three times a week, contributing at the highest level. So thank you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and all the sick babies and sick people out there. Hopefully you guys get better and you guys get better soon. Peace. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.